Today I want to clear up some of the confusion that's out there around when you're dealing with back pain, or really any pain, but let's focus on back pain. Should you or should you not move and exercise if it increases your pain? So I'm Dr. Rodney White with Sapi Chiropractic and we deal with this every day in our offices and, and there's so much misinformation out there, people aren't sure what to do. So I wanna make it easy for you. So number one, if you're dealing with acute pain, meaning you've only had this injury fairly recently, technically acute means less than three months, chronic means more than three months. But for the sake of this argument, let's even say hours, days, or, or even weeks. If you're dealing with pain and you go and exercise and do any kind of movement or normal activity of daily living and it makes the pain worse, Number one, you need to go and get checked by someone. I don't care whether it's us at Sapi Chiropractic, but go and find a good chiropractor or, or a good physical therapist and go and get it seen to. But if it's causing more pain with that thing you're doing, you wanna dial it back. Now, you never wanna to go to no movement. So even if you're bailed up with a horrible disc injury and you can barely walk, you still need to try and get up and shuffle around the house. That was me last year for a couple of weeks. I was almost bedridden with a bad disc injury, but every hour or two, I had my wife help me get up and I'd just try and shuffle around the living room no matter how painful it was. And we did some basic stretching and movement exercises that we've talked about on plenty of other videos, but you have to keep some movement there, but that's when it's the extreme. But if you're in pain where you can walk and do those things, but every time you go to the gym or every time you run or every time you help someone lift something, your back hurts, if it's a new injury, yeah, you should stop doing that while it hurts and you definitely should go and get checked out. Now, if you have a chronic injury, meaning you've had it for more than three months, it's a little bit of a different ball game here and this is where it gets really hard for people. So when it comes to chronic pain, especially chronic back pain, something goes on in the brain that causes a lot of this mess. Now, we don't know why in the science and the research why it happens, but we know it does happen. So in a normal functioning body, in a normal functioning nervous system, we have pain receptors, which are called nociceptors, and then we have our mechanoreceptors. These are receptors that tell the brain um, sensation, pressure, movement. These are the receptors that allow us to know where we are with our eyes closed, with my eyes shut, I can touch my finger to my nose because of some of those mechanoreceptors. If something brushes against me, I can feel it. If something squeezes me, I can feel it. So it's essentially all of the touch and sensory receptors that aren't pain. These in a normal functioning system are inversely proportional. So if we have pain, the mechanoreceptors are low. If we can boost the mechanoreceptors, those pain receptors should switch off a little bit. That's why when you bump your arm or you hurt yourself, you rub it. Your instinct is to rub it and instinctively you're right because you're increasing the mechanoreceptors, decreasing those nociceptors or the pain receptors. In chronic pain, something goes wrong in the brain where it's like a switch flips and now your brain recognizes all the receptors as pain instead of just movement. And so now the nociceptors and mechanoreceptors go together. In an acute situation, unless you're overdoing it, if you move, you're pushing those up, pushing the pain receptors down. In a chronic situation, if you move, you push those up, you're also pushing up the pain receptors. This is why for all of you suffering with chronic pain, movement is so terrible. You can barely walk, you, you do anything and you're in pain all day, every day. That's why. So. What should you do? Well, if it's normal activities of daily living, if you're not asking your body to do too much, you wanna try and treat your body the same way an acute pain sufferer would, where simple movement is still very good for you, even though it hurts. Now, it may be so debilitating that you can't even do it, and again, that's the person who absolutely needs to be getting adjusted by a chiropractor, probably also doing some physical therapy, maybe even seeing a pain management specialist, and not just someone who's injecting to numb it, but someone who's injecting it with the right kind of um, makeup of fluids that helps the tissue recover instead of just numbing it. And we have some great people that we refer to who do that here in Omaha if you are stuck in that situation. But you wanna try and be moving. And if, so again, if you can't move without pain, you have to go and get seen. But if you're starting to feel a little better or you can grit your teeth and get through it, you wanna keep moving, just not overdoing it, because what happens is when you get enough movement over enough period of time, that switch seems to flip back. And now all of a sudden, movement helps, 
and pushes pain receptors down. Now there is no magic number where if you get to X amount of pain or X amount of movement, it changes and shifts. It'd be nice if there was that so we could say, here's all you have to do to get to that because it's very hard for our chronic pain sufferers. We'll be adjusting them and telling them, you've got to walk, you've got to move. And they look at me like I have three heads because they're saying it hurts every time I do that. I know, but you have to keep pushing through that. But again, if it's more an acute injury, a very severe low back that's just locked up on you, you also still need to move, but you can keep it much less because you don't want to do anything too complex to make that tissue damage worse. So you've got to protect the damage that's healing, the chronic pain sufferer, we're already beyond tissue healing. We need to flip that brain back. So that's probably even the best way to look at it. An acute new injury, move enough to keep your, your joints and your, your tissues and your fluid mobile, but don't do enough to damage more area. Chronic pain sufferer, you've got to move as much as your brain can handle because we have to get back to that point where those mechanoreceptors and nociceptors go inversely proportional instead of proportionally together. So hopefully that makes sense and isn't, and isn't too technical. I've tried to make that as simple as possible. If it leaves you confused or you're not sure in your condition, hey, here's what I'm dealing with, should I move or not move, just reach out to us. Send us a message on whatever channel you're seeing this on and we'll always make sure within hopefully 24 hours, one of the doctors, usually myself or, or, or one of the other ones will get back to you and say, hey, great question, Bob, we might ask a few more questions and then tell you, here's what we would recommend, but you might also be in a situation where you're better off just getting checked by someone. And if you're in the Omaha area, great, we'll see you. If not, we can help you find someone, unless you already have someone good to see anyway. So that's all we've got on that topic. Hopefully it clears up a lot of the confusion and we'll be back again soon with another video. See you then.